Even though I love to fight, we all need to fight together against hatred. For every race, religion, and gender, that we can all live together in peace. Please join me in a moment of silence as we strive to end intolerance in our time. Kick that pansy bitch in the face. Yes, Sensei. <laughs> What's up you guys? So I'm coming here with another video and we're talking about season 3 of Cobra Kai as well as the SJWs attacking about it because I guess Cobra Kai is too white. Let's get into it. But first, of course, if you're new to my channel, what is up? My name is Mitch Maverick. Mitch, hey Mitch, Mitch, all the Mitches, and pretty much all I talk about what I talk about. So, current events, reviews, and pop culture within the scope of entertainment, culture, and purpose. So, TV remove reviews, social political commentary, be sure to check out all those videos as you're finishing this video. Alright, so getting into it, I finally binged season 3 and actually all of Cobra Kai this past weekend and I'm finally getting into this video. So, first part of the video, obviously talk about the pros and cons of Cobra Kai. Less cons, but we'll get into it and then later in the video I'll talk about now the SJWs because Cobra Kai is being picked up by Netflix and it's getting popular of course the SJWs are gonna be attacking about it saying Cobra Kai is too white so we'll go talk about that so go ahead fast forward to that if you just want to go to that portion but if not we're just gonna go talk about Cobra Kai real quick getting into the show I, I think it's super amazing you know like I, I thoroughly enjoy it like yes there's is a very anti SJW anti PC about this uh, which I totally love and especially in our current age but we'll put that aside obviously the storyline bringing something from the past into our present day because it is in the San Fernando Valley my hometown obviously I'm gonna be rooting for this and you know again you know the only side thing that is kind of negative and it's not really a negative because I don't expect it to be at the same level of daredevil fighting sequences but you know that's kind of like it you know but I, I love how it's cheesy it's kind of over the top you have such plot conveniences like if um, Sam and Miguel are kissing of course um, uh, Robbie's gonna be in the background so it's one of those things that like obviously he's gonna be there at that time in that moment so yes there's a lot of cheesy moments into it but I'm eating it up I love the humor I love when they have like when they're elevating something and they bring it down you know like oh I love this lemonade and like and, she, and the mom's like it's crystal light type thing and you know they bring it down and I love again the whole like with the whole SJW narrative I love that this breaks it down like there's still some it talks about it but it subverts it you know when they're talking about like council person instead of council woman and everything and they 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 put like a jab underneath it like how stupid it is right and so everything about this really great I think one thing that is super funny that I mentioned it to my friends and co-workers is that they bring the like franchise of the karate kid and they and they uh, with all the flashbacks and everything it makes it seem like this like three movies I guess four if you can count um if you count the Hillary Swank movie I don't know if we're counting the Jackie Chan movie but anyway but you it, it, they make it they flush it out as if it is a super large lore going into like let's say the when he went to when Daniel uh, went to um, Okinawa right he saved that little girl in the past and then she's all grown up and then like they bring all these characters that are like extras and uh, as if they like have a greater meaning in the everything so I like it. I like how the story progresses and everything. I really don't know where the story is going to go. Obviously, the two household, like um, the Lawrence, uh, Johnny Lawrence and Daniel Russo are combining their dojos against Kreese. But after that, I don't know where the show is going to go. So maybe they'll go to a further kind of like a deadly class type thing. I don't know. That's just a far fetched throw out there. But I, again, right now I like it. The only thing I didn't, so a slight, um, I'm jumping all over the place. The slight setback with this past season, this season three is um, Miss Robinson, Aisha. I I think she, I was looking into it and I guess she had things outside of, in real life that she couldn't participate or something. I don't know if that's true or not, but like I would have liked one aspect they're saying like they didn't know what to do with her character in the third season because, um, the other, the other girl in Cobra Kai took her spot type of thing. 
I would, again, I would still like to see her because I think she was a really good character, especially when it came to, she was the second student um, next to Miguel in Johnny Lawrence's Cobra Kai. So I really like to see her. I guess they don't know what they want to do with her um, character. So we'll see how it goes. And then we'll, we'll see if Hillary Swank, like I said, if Hillary Swank comes in, maybe she comes in as a villain. I was throwing it as a far-fetched thing. Like... Me, like Daniel Russo and Hilary Swank, they're opposite students. Like, I was the best student type of thing. Like, we're both, we, we have the same sensei, sensei type thing. So, we'll see. Like, okay. So, again, overall, it is super awesome. I really enjoy it. And, obviously, this season was really fun. And, yeah. So, again, everything that has been going into these three seasons, I really like. I really like the character Miguel. Miguel is my favorite character. I think he's very endearing and obviously it's cool that LaRusso has his own dojo at his own house. That's something that I would love to, if I had the money, I would love to do that too. And yeah, I just, and I like how Johnny Lawrence is transforming his character, you know, like he recognizes Cobra Kai, that what made him what he is and he's willing to transform it into something better, you know, like, um, don't be a pussy, but you don't like we're, we and don't be assholes, but you still can be badass. And so, yeah, again, all these small messages are really great, and I like it. And so, going with that said, let's talk about how the SJWs are attacking Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai never dies. <laughs> Again, this is coming from Jeremy from The Quartering. He really did a segment upon like how SJWs are attacking Cobra Kai. Again, because it's on Netflix, it's gaining popularity. So, again, I just want to use this as kind of like a starting point, as a talking point from it, and then we'll go into it. At Cobra Kai, at, sorry, at Netflix, Cobra Kai broke out. Now it's who whiteness is under a new spotlight. Let's look at some of the replies. Should fire the person who wrote this. Just looking to start problems and bash a new show without actually watching one up. So very shameful. Oh God, come on. Well, one of the main fighters is from Ecuador, Cobra Kai. F the LA Times. Uh, it honors Miyagi and introduces a character from at least a few different ethnicities. I'm a Mexican and I will go in for this show all day. Leave them alone. Chosen and Daniel uh, have the same sensei, besides what other Asian actors have karate in their background. Sure, actors like Jet Li, Jackie Chan, Michelle, uh, etc. have used those skills in movies, but no one can replace Miyagi. That's true. As a brown man, and I'll allow it, we have much bigger issues in life than this continual, divisive, recirculating crap. It's 2016 all over again. Can't wait for what else the Los Angeles Times will bring back. Man spreading maybe. This article is ridiculous. Even the woke crowd isn't buying it. They're appealing to them. There isn't a single person in their replies agreeing with this. I bet you complain about the clouds being too white. Jesus effing H. Damn, the wokes have struck again. Everything is woke, and the term woke has to be changed because it's deeply rooted in bad things. I learned that from TikTok. Here, sign the petition. I mean, there's nobody agreeing with this. Nobody. What does the article actually say? Well, except for the Latino character, Miguel, all of the other people of color are outside the main cast. So it actually doesn't show as diverse as a show in a sense. It doesn't show as diverse in a show as a sense. Meaning, well yeah, they have diversity, but it's not like exactly how I want it, so it's problematic. Said Anna Christina Ramon, co-author of UCLA's annual, ho annual Hollywood Diversity Report, which designates leads as the top eight credited regular actors. It found that the white characters made up 75.9% of the leads in digital scripted series like Cobra Kai in the 2018-2019 season, while 5.9% of the leads were Latinx. Stop using that, white people. <laughs> I guarantee you a white person wrote this article. There isn't a single Latino person that I know that doesn't think Latinx sounds ridiculous. Also, just to point that out, stop using Filipinx as well. I have a video on that. I'll probably link it somewhere. Let's not use, let's stop using Philippine X too. This has made, uh, Latinx is a, is a, is a purse puppy phrase 
created by woke, rich, white women. That's the only people that use it. A number of critics have taken notice of the series whiteness as well. Salon Culture senior editor Hannah Wen, who has also been critical of the series, told the Times that the only main character of color who has any sort of interiority is Miguel. Danny LaRusso, Italian kid from New Jersey, as Vanity Fair's Sonia Sariana uh, put it about the first two seasons, it's the most Japanese character on the show. Are you, it's Karate Kid! Karate Kid is not a Japanese show. It isn't a Japanese movie. It never was. You're joking, right? <laughs> Okay, again, just using again using that segment, um, I love Jeremy uh, and everything that he said was on point. And you know, if there are people are going to throw in some Asian characters, other people have mentioned this in other forums and other threads and videos and all this stuff. You know, like, um, Kyler was one of the, the first love interests of Sam, he's Asian, he was the top jock. Um, you, you learn that he's a bully, so again, you have an Asian character. Is he a main character? Uh, a supporting character, maybe, and of course, we have the ghost of Miyagi throughout the whole season. We have flashbacks of Miyagi throughout the whole season. He's not in there in person, you know, because he's not with us. And But you have his spirit, and so I guess you can use that as a character. But I, I understand their point that there is no, like, Asian character that's prominent, I guess, in there. But it doesn't have to be like when it comes to good storytelling when it comes to you don't need to have a checkbox you like he was saying like there is diversity you know like Aisha and and everyone else, and Miguel and everyone else in this show but for them it needs to hit the checkboxes as far as what they need but everyone else that actually has a brain like you focus on story this was a continuation of the Karate Kid so you have Daniel Russo and you have Johnny Lawrence that, that it's using it more like in his perspective uh, as far as his life and everything that how his life has been effective well Daniel Russo got like the rest of it and and you know people were saying that he Daniel Russo was a bully and everything I guess you could say that but uh, you know I think in the third season I think Ali makes up the point that each of them sees there's a level of each other in like there's a portion of Daniel Russo and Johnny uh, and Johnny Lawrence and there's a portion of Johnny Lawrence in Daniel LaRusso and so I think Ali makes up a good point that they're kind of like a mirror of each other and so so the point being is that you focus on good storytelling, you focus on the humor, you focus on character development with the characters you have. You don't have to have a checkbox of, of like requirements of like, I need this character and this character and this character. No, like obviously it's it like the whole like going into the third season with Miguel fall out of the like cliffhanger. Uh, <laughs> Um, um, second floor hanger? <laughs> uh, maybe a bad joke. Anyway, the fact that she, he fall. Like, I remember seeing that in commercials, but like now that I was watching it, it had to hold a bit bigger impact. And I love how, you know, Johnny Lawrence brought him back. You know, as he said, like, you know, as, again, going into what Johnny Lawrence was saying, like, hey, he's gonna fight back and everything. And you see all his progressions. You saw how he was angry, how, how Miguel was angry getting into this, and he kind of, and he did blame. Um, Johnny into it, but they worked together. He got over it, and obviously it's a TV show. Like if that was a real life thing, like you know, that probably would not have happened. But obviously it's a TV show, and we needed Miguel to walk again. So, um, yeah. Final thoughts again with the, when it comes to an SJW now attacking Cobra Kai again. Cobra Kai never dies, and it's because now that Cobra Kai is on Netflix because it's gaining popularity with a lot of people. Because I mean, when it was on YouTube, it was still popular, but now that it is on Netflix, it has a wider it has a wider people, and it has more um, opportunity to be like advertised. And now again, that I'm talking about it, everyone's talking about it, and everyone wants to watch it now. And everyone is going to go to the movies. I had my friend coworker was saying like, I want to watch the movies before I watch Cobra Kai. And I was like, no, you don't have to do that because you can just. There's enough flashbacks. There's enough context. Just watching Cobra Kai without remembering or knowing about the original trilogy to go into the show. Like it, it can stand on its own. And so again. It is just this SJW is trying to attack what is popular. You know, they attack what is great with everyone else. They because th that's what they gotta do. It it is so pathetic, right? It is like if I was, I don't want to cuss as much. It like as a Johnny Lawrence in here, but like 
if anything, the only thing that I gotta say when it comes to the SJWs is very Cobra Kai, like, QUIET! <laughs> QUIET! You know? <laughs> like, they gotta be put in their state, you, you, got, you gotta put them in their place because, like, you, you let people enjoy it. Like, one, watch the show, and then two, it is actually good without going into the talking points that you need to talk about. So, I'm going in circles. Obviously, we love this, and I think it's really great, and I and I really hope that the showrunners of Cobra Kai keeps on doing what they're doing and not listen to any of the Twitter SJWs, NPCs, and what they got to say, because they're doing a really good job so far. So, yeah. Again, so tell me what you think. Comment below. Continue the conversation. What do you love about Cobra Kai? Yeah, see you in the next video. You can follow me on my Instagram at HeyMitchBitch. You can follow me on my joint Instagram at It's Mandatory Fun, where I do other videos with my friend Jen. I am thinking about doing part, well, well, not parlor, rumble. We'll see how that goes. And then check you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace, peace, peace. Be with you.